It's a picture-perfect view. What a picture-perfect house. You are picture-perfect. If you've ever heard anyone use the phrase picture-perfect before, you have been lied to. Pictures are made up of pixels. They come together to construct an image, right? What if I told you that these pixels don't even exist? Dr. Alvy Ray Smith, a pioneer in computer graphics, uses this metaphor. Imagine a wooden board. And on this board, a nail struck onto its surface in a grid-like pattern. These nails, they vary in height. Some are struck deeper than others. Now, if we were to take a white sheet to cover the board, we end up with wrinkles. Each point of contact by the nails disrupts what could be a perfectly flat surface. Those points, those are the pixels. Here's the mind-blowing part. Geometry tells us that a cube has three dimensions, a square has two, and a line has one. Hence, a point on a graph has no dimensions at all. It doesn't even exist. Yet, a group of these points forges a disturbance. And that disturbance constructs something that we can prove visually through what we can see, but not physically by what we know. So what we call a picture, like the one you see behind me, is an illusion fabricated by microscopic imperfections. What makes up a picture, what makes up a picture aren't the pixels by themselves directly, but by their disturbance. And we see this when we zoom in on any photo. Its clarity and resolution are distorted. What we are left with is a jumbled up mess. So how then can something made up of imperfections be perfect at all? Well, it can't. The two words, picture and perfect, they contradict each other, which is why picture perfect is a lie. Even on its own, the word perfect describes a conviction far from reality, yet it invades our day-to-day -day life. Some of you here may think of perfection as a guiding light to strive for flawless excellence. I do. In my academic work, I strive for those perfect grades, scores, and percentages. In my social circles, I'm reminded to act according to societal standards in order to fit in perfectly. And often, I compare myself to others, seeking validation and striving for what I see in others as perfect. But at the same time, we all know that nothing ever is perfect. It's an infinite path to an unreachable destination. Now, the perfectionism I'm referring to is in its loose terminology. I don't suffer from or have any history of severe conditions that may arise from perfectionism. However, perfectionism does play a large role in many health, mental health conditions. The American Psychological Association defines perfectionism as the tendency to demand oneself or others an extremely high or even flawless level of performance, and makes clear that it is often associated with depression, anxiety, eating disorders, and other mental health conditions. In the first year of COVID-19, common rates, common conditions, the rates of common conditions like depression and anxiety went up by more than 25%. And now, one in eight people in the world suffer from a mental health condition. In my home country of Japan, suicide rates were falling between 2010 and 2018 until, su until suddenly, in 2020, it saw a sudden spike. With the pandemic, mental health has become a more prevalent issue in every part of the world and perfectionism has been associated with many of these conditions. What's more, perfectionism is on the rise, especially among younger generations. A study conducted by Andrew P. Hill and Thomas Kieran demonstrated an increase in perfectionist, perfectionist drive among college students from America, Canada, and Britain. The test measured three main types of perfectionism. The perfectionism that comes from yourself, from others, and comparing yourself to others. All three of these categories saw an increase in score. 10, 33, and 16% respectively. Some suggested causes for these results include the rise of social media, placing societal pressures on younger users. An increase in college graduation rates in the United States has been linked to a Western rise in meritocracy, placing unrealistic educational and professional expectations. Whatever the case may be, the fact remains that younger generations are experiencing a surge in perfectionism 
alongside serious mental health concerns. While I have experienced, to some extent, some regular levels of stress and anxiety, I've been fortunate enough to discover an escape from such, one that may seem self-contradictory without explanation, but it has guided me to not only acknowledge imperfection, but to embrace it. My getaway is in the world of visual media. This is what the making of Half Past Sleep look like. It's a short video filled with nighttime sceneries of Tokyo. What I did is I printed out each frame from a video clip and smeared them with paint. The brush strokes are messy and disorganized, like a five-year-old doodled all over it, and put together, it creates a blurry, noticeably shaky visual. It looks really sloppy, and I love it. The first type of perfectionism comes from yourself. You are its sole enforcer. When I started making this video, I wanted everything to be perfect, for everything to fit together, not a single detail missed or mistaken. I felt a lot of frustration in the process. There would be always something off, something awfully wrong. And I was stressed, anxious of all the different ways in which this video could turn out. But when I got to this point, it was different. I felt free. Goal? No. Method? Nope. Vision? No clue. It was self-exploration, allowing myself to trust the unknown, doing out everything out of pure instinct, accepting no, no, inviting mistakes along the way. And I liked the feeling so much that I didn't just stop with just those frames, I, con I continued to edit the rest of the video. But this time, I let in all the flaws. The stressful thought of making a mistake became less of a distraction. The anxious feeling of what could go wrong shifted into a view of what could be. The things that are usually considered to be obstacles evolved into a part of the experience and over time, I realized that this logic isn't just limited to making videos. I encourage all of you to do the same. Relieve the pressures from within by allowing yourself to think and perform freely. Dedicate yourself to the craft and not its destination. These come from a video I made for the high school track team. Now, unlike the previous project, it was to be seen by my teammates, the school, and the eyes of the internet. The pressures weren't just from me this time, it was closer to the second type of perfectionism, the perfectionism from others. When I, when I went about making this video, I went through all the past school promotional sports videos I could find. Initially, I wanted to find uh, an inspiration, a reference. But in the end, I realized I wanted to make something different, to fabricate a scrappy, stop-motion kind of look. This meant going against the standard sports video, which would have been fine, if it weren't for the pressures of disappointing others. Of course, I did it anyway. The results ended up with mistimed cuts, misaligned masking, and an overly contrasted background. But at the same time, I had created something new, something creative, something original. The feedback I received from afterwards weren't just that it was good, but it was different. Accompanied by all the little imperfections in the video, I had derailed myself from what was expected creating something unique. OK, last one. This one, what I like about this one is that it gets people really confused. The only thing altered in the, light, in the photo is the lighting. So what's going on with the bike? Sorry, I won't reveal you the answer, but I will say this. Out of all the shots that I took of the bike, this is the only one where the bike happened to be cut off. This seemingly small defect became its pivotal feature. It makes you wonder. The third type of perfectionism comes from comparing yourself to others. But if you take the time to observe the world around you, you'll notice that the whole world is filled with imperfections. We put so much faith in what we are told to be true that sometimes we forget to understand its logic. I'm not encouraging you to point out all the infinite flaws of everything around you. No, I want you to try and understand them, to question, to wonder. Like the missing segment of the bike, let the imperfections drive your curiosity. You may consider things that you've never considered before and eventually find yourself the answer. Imperfections surround us everywhere. Through closer in inspection, we find flaws in ourselves and others. 
But it's when we commit to those faults and failures that we are able to self-explore, express our individuality, and extract our curiosity. So embrace imperfection. Because by doing so, we widen our perspective, our understanding, and our picture of the world. Thank you.